In today's video, I'm going to be switching out the rear trailing arm on the 2002 Mitsubishi Lancer. This trailing arm needs to be replaced. But if you haven't already, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, as well as check out my channel content for more. The trailing arm. The trailing arm. I cannot stress that enough. The trailing arm bushing was causing so much havoc. I mean, I changed the lateral link. I changed everything else knowing that the bolt will come out. The only bolt that I know will not come out is the one to the control arm to the actual chassis of the vehicle. That will not come out. Or the rear cradle, that will not come out. But the rest of them will. And the trailing arm. Oh my gosh, trying to get those things out. Okay, that was bonkers. And Lancer is still alive, and yes, it's still chugging along, but barely. The trailing arm though, oh my gosh, that's all I can say. It was just multiple days of me laying under the car, hitting it with the torch, hitting it with the impact, then I threw it up on the hoist, hit it with the torch, hit it with the impact before I left, drove it out, hit it with the torch, hit it with the impact when I got home. And I did that every day for two weeks until all of a sudden the bolt went and I was like, what? Finally. Now, realistically, if this was a car in the shop, yeah, you couldn't, you wouldn't be waiting that long. But, I mean, this car is my own personal car, so let's, uh, I mean, what, I don't know how to explain it. Besides, I did forget to film toward the end because my camera was dying. So just keep that in mind. If you know how to put the drum on and the rear brake cable assembly, then that's all you really need to know. But otherwise, everything else went by together so smooth after that bolt came out. The trailing arm to the body, furthest in, so... Let's get right into it. I'm going to start by removing the hubcap from the vehicle. Using a 21 millimeter on a rattle gun, I'm going to loosen and remove the wheel and tire. Just like that. Setting the tire under the car. Using a 17 millimeter. I'm going to hold this portion of this bolt and loosen it and hopefully this bolt moves. It moves, which is a good sign, so I can loosen it the rest of the way. Like this, and there's that nut. On the bottom half here, we've got a 17 right here. And on this side, we have a 17 right on that back side that needs to be removed. Same thing, hold it with the wrench. <laughs> With that nut removed, I'm going to make sure it spins. A little bit of rattle rattles. Good sign that spins. On this back side here, we have a 17 millimeter bolt that goes through. This is for the rear forward lateral link. It needs to be removed. I'm just going to slide the impact wrench like so. Slide it over. out. Over to the front of the trailing arm, we have this bolt here. This is also a 17 and it needs to be removed. I'm going to use the impact wrench and a swivel. Ah, oh, there goes the socket. Be careful with those swivels. And there's our bolt. Cool. I can now tap and remove this upper bolt. And doing the same for the bottom. And there's our bolt. I can guarantee you this brake line's not gonna come off. I'm just gonna snip it just like that. So it comes off with the trailing arm. Let me grab this clip out. Which looks like it needs to be replaced. And then here's our piece. So if I can take a wrench and hold that, let me see. This is a 17, oh yeah. Lucky. Let's see if I can jostle that thing out. Oh, shifted on me. 
There we go. So our fitting is now out and it possibly can be reused. And we didn't damage the flex line. So I'm just gonna thread that back in so we don't damage it more. Now I gotta pull the drum off. Connect the emergency brake cable. Removing this drum, the shoddy old drum. There we go. See, I told you I had a plan for this in the path. Let's connect this emergency brake cable without damaging it. That's an easy one, because all I have to do is pop it over the little lever. Like so. There's our emergency brake cable. And then there's a little clip back there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. That needs to be removed prior to me removing the whole trailing arm out of the vehicle. Using a small flathead, I'm gonna try and get in between this clip just so I can jostle it out. Make sure it spins and moves. Sweet. And then I could take a pick, but because this is a clip, all I have to do is just pop it off. I can back this right up and out. There's our clip. If I can slide it out. And there's our clip. Just to show you what it looks like, we don't want to damage it, and you can't get another one. I'm gonna take a flat punch and just jounce it. Give it a little jaunt or bounce to push it back. And I know this is kind of hard to see. There it is. And that just breaks up that rust ever so slightly. So I can shift this emergency brake cable out of the way. And there we go. I can shift the whole emergency brake cable out of the way. And just to show you, it comes right out. There's our emergency brake cable right there. With nothing holding this trailing arm assembly in place, I can simply just pry from the bottom, pry from the top. Moving my tools out of the way. like that. I can pull the trailing arm out. Oh my god. Look at that bushing. Look at this bushing. Wow. It's a good thing I'm pulling it off. Here's a comparison of the two trailing arms. The one in the back is the one that came off my car. The one in the front came off of another car. As we look, the main concern was that bushing. And look at the bottom. The whole bushing sleeve is messed up so it definitely needed to be replaced what i'm going to do is disconnect that brake cable the for the emergency brake because i did not remove that from my vehicle so i'm going to do that and then install it on the car i'm going to stick the new trailing arm right up and in so i'm going to start by installing that bushing that's furthest in the vehicle after overkilling the bolt with anti-seize, I'm just going to install this bushing back into place. Using another bolt to align the hole. And considering I cannot see this hole or where it is, I'm kind of just guessing at the moment to try and align it up. There it is. Now I can take the actual bolt and stick it right up and through using that 17 millimeter socket to just snug it down. Okay, now I'm going to back it off ever so slightly so I can still move this bushing where I set preload on it. At this point I'm going to reinstall the bolt for the upper control arm and the lower control arm. Shifting the unit up like so. I'm gonna drench that in anti-seize. I know I'm overkilling it with the anti-seize. I obviously don't need this much. Kind of defeats the purpose. Or the forward side going back. 
like that. Do the same for the bottom. Going to reinstall that bolt. Being generous again with this uh, anti-seize. <laughs> Lining the lower control arm up, which I need the floor to do. Carefully using the pry bar, it's gonna jostle that. Just like that. Lift it up a little more. You see how it's sliding in? Perfect. I'm gonna take that bolt, stick it back through. There it is. Couple of light caps. Let me readjust. Wherever the OG nut went. There it is. This top bolt, I can stick the nut back on. Okay, Coolio, I can still move it to the bottom. I'm just gonna hold it and snug it. I know this is kind of terrible to see, but now on this back side, I'm gonna reinstall the bolts for the rear forward lateral link. Again, the socket, ratchet, and extension, I'm just going to snug that down. I'm just going to leave that loose so I can torque that down in a little bit. Install that pre-bent brake line. We've got the one that was saved because I'm awesome. I have a new one that slides in, or at least a different one. Brass hammer, tap it into place, 10 millimeter, loosen up the old one with the old fitting. This should be bent to the original style-ish, as close as I could get it. So there's the top one. lift up and I can get the bottom half of this in place using a 13 millimeter also a half inch for this bubble flare I want it as snug as possible and I'm just gonna hold the line making sure it doesn't rotate just like this okay there it is now I can open the bleeder valve on the back side and then torque all this down. The axle nut, I'm going to torque it to 136 foot-pounds. For the upper control arm bolt, I'm going to torque it to 80 foot-pounds. Wow, it's a mess in here. Winter's upon us. Okay. Same thing, I'm going to torque the bottom control arm bolt for the lower control arm to 80 foot-pounds. For the bolt on the back side of the trailing arm from the inside, I'm gonna torque that to 106 foot-pounds. Whenever you're working on a car, this rusty skepticism hits your mind if it's actually gonna torque or not. Snug at that rear lateral link down for the time being. Torque spec 70, so. Okay, I'm gonna slide that parking brake cable right back in. Looking at that, okay. Let me slide this back into the trailing arm and the rear wheel bearing. Where's that hole? There's that hole. There it is. And then I can pull it on through. Just gotta make sure it snakes out the right way, like this. And then I can snake this up and through. And all I have to do is line it back up. Ugh. 
there emergency brake cable is reinstalled oh fruit loops i forgot the clip no amount of anti-seize and i mean no amount of anti-seize will save me from having that thing not come apart <laughs> I mean, you could tell right away I've been at that for a while, and I mean, it was pretty clear by not only the mess that was on the ground, but the fact that all and everything was just, ugh. But that is the perk of living in the great state of Michigan in a salt-covered world where the exposure of cars really is rough. So, otherwise, if you live down past the Mason-Dixon line, I don't think it's going to be a very big problem, or out west for that matter because the road conditions are uh, slightly different. Now, I do want to move to Georgia, but that doesn't mean, uh, yeah. I would love to get another Lancer. Trust me, I would love to, but they're rough around here. Overall, the bolts, the work, the amount of effort that went into that was astronomical. And I mean, realistically, I think the only real issues that you're going to face are the bolts spitting in bushings, or if the bushing is actually broken, then you just have a, you can actually tap another bushing into the trailing arm. But it was actually cheaper for me to buy the trailing arm from the pone yard than to buy the bushing because the trailing arms with the bushings were $15 a piece, while the actual bushing cost about $38. And I'm like, does that come as a whole assembly? Oh yeah, I'll just dump that right in. Then I don't have to sit there wasting all my time to put a bushing inside of a, a rubber bushing inside of a crummy old part that's you know already on its way out. <laughs> so I mean, I I thought it from a logical standpoint. Otherwise, it was a really complicated process. No no more complicated than the fuel filler neck or other things. Now, yeah, I do drive this car every single day, so I had a time crunch on it too. But if you like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Check out my channel content for more. And hey, have fun.